Hi and welcome back. This is probably going to be one of the most challenging episodes of the entire series. We're going to be doing nesting of controllers and views. We're going to be uh, changing models, controllers, and views along with the routing system. And so just follow along. This one I suggest that you actually probably watch a few times and go through it just so you become very familiar with it because the type of things that I'm going to be doing are things that you're going to have to do for a lot of different applications. And so it's definitely important to uh, really understand the way it works. And I'll try my best to you know, take it one step at a time. Uh, however, the more times you can do it, the better you'll be at it. So we're definitely going to want to create a branch for this one. And we're going to say nesting purchases. Okay, so we're now working in our branch. And the first thing I'm going to do is come up to app, models, and then in models, for invoice, we have has many purchases. One thing that we want to do is we want to say dependent destroy and what that means is say that I wanted to delete an invoice but that invoice had four or five different purchases related to it if those purchases stay around but the invoice is there we're gonna have what's called uh, orphan elements in the database and that can cause problems and it's just really considered a best practice not to have that so uh, that's gonna fix that issue so uh, we just kind of slightly refactored the model so that's uh, one of the first steps whenever you have nesting or even really connections like this in a relational database the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually restructure this file system and so what we want to do is we're going to create a new controller in here or a new directory in the controller so right click and say new folder and for this new folder we're going to call it invoices and then inside invoices we're actually going to move our purchases controller so I'm going to grab purchases and move it into invoices so now in order to get to the purchases controller you have to go invoices slash purchases controller and uh, you'll see why we do this in a second that's the first part the next thing that we have to nest are our views so down here we're gonna do the exact same thing right click hit new folder and type in invoices and then you want to take all of these purchases and you want to actually put those inside of that invoices directory so there you go so now when you come down to invoices you'll have purchases right here and I I do realize I didn't need to create a new invoices directory that was already there uh, so all we did was take purchases and put it in invoices so now in order to get to any of these views they're all nested inside invoices so uh, that that's what we needed to do in our file system now uh, this is going to break the entire site so uh, don't even worry about going and checking that right now uh, the next thing we have to do is now change our config file or config directory and change our routes file and so in order to get this to do what we need it to do uh, we're going to actually move some things around so you can see purchases is up here at the top I'm going to actually cut that out and we're gonna come down to invoices and we're gonna place a block inside invoices so we're gonna do resources invoices do and then I'm gonna paint paste in resources purchases and then I'm also going to say accept and then in brackets index and then we also need to say where this controller is going to be so in there we're going to say invoices slash purchases okay hit end and I'll try to explain exactly what this means so uh, what we did is in order to nest anything inside rails uh, you need to 
change your routes folder or your file and so I put a do block inside of invoices so now purchases as far as the routes are concerned is now under the category of invoices and then this accept uh, term right here this is saying I don't want to have a index call so because I'm never just going to list out the uh, each one of the individual purchases without them being associated with an invoice. So I just wanted to show you that you actually can force the program to block certain method calls and that's what I'm doing right here. And then here, this is how the system is going to know where to go find this controller because as soon as we put it inside of the invoices uh, directory in the controller folder, it disappeared as far as Rails is concerned and so we have to uh, declaratively state where that is and so that's why we have invoices slash purchases and this is all we have to do for the routes file and the next thing we're going to do is go and change our controller for our invoices so I'm going to come up here and because we're only going to be calling this for the show action what we're going to do is say invoice equals and then do invoice dot find params and then put in that param block ID. So all this is saying, uh, if you don't remember when we went over this, is uh, the at symbol in front of invoice is an instance variable. So this is something we're going to be able to use in our view safely then invoice is the call, it's actually the database query, and we're finding the element with, that has an ID of what we're going to send it inside the parameters. So when we click on it, the URL is going to change. When that URL changes, it's going to give a specific ID number for the invoice. And so the system then is going to know to look for it, find it and then only show this one invoice and store it inside the instance variable. So that's how we're going to get the invoice for the show method. Now what we're going to do is get our stored um, uh, get our stored purchases. So I'm going to say purchases and put that in an instance variable and then all I have to do is say invoice dot purchases and that's it. So what this is doing, if you remember back to our last episode where we did the uh, database query using the console, this is essentially the same thing we did there. We are calling a specific invoice and then we're doing dot purchases which is going to call all of the items that uh, that are associated with that specific invoice and then it's going to store it inside of this instance variable called purchases. So I'll save that file and we'll close up our controllers. I don't believe there's anything we have to do in those now. And then the last thing before we test this out is we're going to come down to our views, go to our invoices, and then click on show. Okay, so right now we just have these elements where we have a date, company, tax, and then employee name, and then some buttons. And so this is what we're going to be changing, and this is where we're going to put the line items in for each of the purchases for this particular invoice. And this next part is actually going to involve the most typing, so I'm going to give us plenty of room right here and we're going to add the same table that we've used up to this point so I'm gonna do div class media on the next line with an indent we're gonna do div class media body next one is gonna be table Oop, sorry table class and we want table and then table dash hover and next we're going to put our table head and inside the table head we're, we'll put a table row that's what the TR stands for and then a few table headings so I'm going to go name and then I will 
copy the next two, or we'll do category and quantity, and then we'll close off the table row and the table head. Okay, and now that we have that done, now it's time to do the table body. To do T body, and now some Ruby. Uh, make sure on this one that you do not do an equal sign, or else you're going to get a really weird looking message. So it's just the angle brackets, the percent sign, and then we want purchases. And I'm sorry, you have to put the at symbol at the front because remember we're calling the instance variable that we created in the show method. So we're going to do purchases each do and then inside of these um, uh, these pipes we're going to do purchase and all that is is it's a iterator value or iterator variable so what it means is every time we go through this loop it's going to select it's going to use purchase to be the selector for those items and it'll make a little bit more sense here in a second if uh, if that doesn't really make a lot of sense to you right now so we'll put in our table row and then TD and let's go with an H4 heading and then some more Ruby and this time you do the percent sign and the equals and we're gonna say purchase dot name and then percent sign angle brackets and then also end off the H4 and the TD okay now let's copy and paste this so can decrease our typing a little bit and next one's going to be purchase category there we go and the last one is going to be quantity okay we can end this table row and then let's see Okay, and now make sure, and this is something that I forget to do a lot when I'm developing, especially if I'm rushing, is I sometimes forget to put this end block in, but if you ever use one of these do's to start a block, and this is a, a for each method right here, you may, may need to make sure you use an end or else you're gonna get a nasty error message. So uh, end and then go back twice and then end our table body then end the table itself let's see yeah that looks like that lines up and then just two ending divs okay I'm just reviewing it really quick. We have our instance variable, our for each method, purchase, 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 name, category, quantity. These all look good. Okay, and we're going to hit save and start up the Rails server. And let's cross our fingers because we did a lot of work and uh, we've not checked it at all. <laughs> so uh, this is always a little bit nerve-wracking for me. So I'm going to come up here and hit refresh. And there you go. It worked. That's awesome. I'm always excited when it works the first time. So uh, that's fantastic. So now what you can see is we have an invoice and we have a uh, we have line items for the invoice so uh, we, we're we gonna need to create the ability to add items and to add them quickly and easily so that's what we're gonna do in the next video but uh, this was a very challenging thing we did not 
uh, we've not covered nesting up to this point and so you now know how to nest controllers and uh, views and routes and everything like that in Rails. So great job. That's definitely something that's more advanced that um, not everybody usually knows how to do. So uh, that's some excellent work. Please let me know if you have any questions or you run into any bugs as you're doing that yourself. Like I said in the beginning, this is definitely one I would suggest trying out a few times just so you become familiar with everything that we just did. And I'll see you in the next video where we start to add in more items on the fly.